So is there any chance we can do this tomorrow? Or? No, it's like today or nothing. This is the only day we have to do this. We're screwed. We spent a lot of money and a lot of time for nothing. We're on the way to the Indy Speedway where we were gonna collaborate and do some car chasing footage with our mini quads. Um, and we've been blessed with just some awesome weather. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, and we're down here with my buddy Gabby Chavez, who is a professional IndyCar driver, who's also over the past year become obsessed with drones. He's got 27 times more quads than me, because I've got one and he's got 27. Gabby is awesome, because we're like the same height. He makes me feel normal. <laughs> <laughs> But the rain looks like the weather's not really cooperating today. This is like flying Tommy out to like Candyland. Like, like just, this is this is his dream, and like then we're just like, eh. I really need <laughs> like I'm disappointed, but I'll survive. I don't know if he's gonna make it. <laughs> Can I just like listen to one like start up and maybe give it a little rest? <laughs> I think we can do that. I'll, I'll add a little bit something to it. Yes! You can be in the driver's seat when it fires up. Okay, deal, deal. Of my life. You don't even have to call me in the morning. You just leave me right here. I'm good. <laughs> so Paul Narkola is coming in. If you don't know who he is, go look up Flight of the Year. Major props to this guy, and he's coming here today. So our hopes and dreams of chasing real race cars were crushed this morning, but I think we found something even better, even more exciting. <laughs> this is the coolest go-kart track I've ever been to. There's like two levels. You're going down, Gabby. No, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Tommy Cross like in front of my hand by inches, I, I, that's inches, what I feel. like oh, I got at least your once head. or twice. No, I was no you head. went right in front of my face. <laughs> I'm like doing like this turtleneck, trying to like 
cover my jugular. Right? Like, we are actually in the Indianapolis Motor Speedway right now inside the museum. I wanted to take this opportunity to start just asking him questions because he comes from a racing background and so I think there's a lot of things that we can learn. So what you guys probably don't know is Gabby took first place at the International Open. And that was your first race? It was a rookie race. Nonetheless, yeah. it was a huge regional international race and that was your first one. Obviously everyone's gonna be like, ah, oh, he's got racing background. So maybe <laughs> just share, like, how do you think he had the leg up from everybody else starting out? I've been racing all my life, been racing go-karts since I was, you know, 10, 11 years old. I'm used to it, I know what to look for. A racing line on track, on a racetrack, is actually not too far from what you're trying to do with getting the apex of the corner, trying to hit a gate. So I think that that translates from one another. But what I think you're not giving enough credit to, and I just know this because I used to race, is that when the race starts, like all the adrenaline starts flowing, but for a drone racing pilot, all of that adrenaline goes to your fingertips. That, in my opinion, is really bad. The people that are doing well now has kind of gotten past that whole anxiety, that race stress. Something tells me that you are very calm when you're racing. I think you have to be, and I think you know, this is maybe where I kind of seem to catch up a little bit faster because I have been doing this all my life. I'm not, I'm not nervous. I'm, it's kind of, I'm used to that environment, so I don't get the shakes. Nowhere near the fastest guys that are flying out there, but I'm beating some of them just because they're crashing and they're getting nervous. I mean, obviously, racing cars it is like your primary thing. Do you feel like there's anything that you can learn from drone racing? Since I started flying FPV, my reactions have kind of become a little sharper. When you scale things down to like drone size and how fast we're actually moving, how little spacing there is between gates or turns, the actual scale speed has gotta be, I'm sure somewhere in the 400 mile an hour range. So when I get back into a race car, well, I'm down to one to one. Now I've got all this extra time to where I've completed a turn and I'm like, okay, well, I'm already ready for the next one. That's still far out to where I'm actually benefiting from flying. So a lot of the top drone racing pilots, they all swear the slower the stick rate, the better. Like, and I've heard this at drone races, they say when you watch F1 race car drivers, all those guys, you don't see them, you know, like doing this, they're going like this. So now let me ask you, compared to like a normal car and when you hop into your race car, how, how sensitive is that steering? It's, it's more sensitive, but, but not, in, not in the same way that you can compare it to rates being more sensitive. It's more linear, so everything you do is happening one-to-one, -one, as to where like in a street car, it's almost like you have a lot of expo. You know, in a race car, it's, it's right there. It gives you a lot of feedback and it's very direct. Would you prefer a faster rate or a slower rate for racing, for drone racing specifically? Uh, slower, lower. And actually, that's what I've been doing is I actually tried that. I took all the, the, the Super 8 off, then I just load the rates way down to where I can just kind of use full stick deflection to, you know, go around the track. If you can give people that are trying to get into the drone racing side three tips going into a drone race, what would it be? I would say know your equipment because you're going to break some stuff, <laughs> know how to fix it, <laughs> and uh, check your power output on your video transmitter. <laughs> There it is. I'm going to ask a whole bunch more questions, but we're not going to put it on camera because I think I might get back into drone racing, and I want to get the leg up on everybody. So you guys go away. <laughs> Me and Gabby are going to talk over here. Peace out. <laughs> So a rainy, disappointing day ended up being amazing. Gabby saved the day with a great backup idea, so big thanks to SI Karting for letting us come in and just run amok through their entire course, just playing with their go-karts and flying our drones. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed hearing more about Gabby's career as an IndyCar driver, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear how the drone racing continues to affect his IndyCar driving. So Gabby, you better win the Indy 500 next year. Anyways, guys, check out the link in the description to go to our store where you can find all of our products. Thank you for the support. You can also support by hitting that subscribe button and that like button, and we will see you in the next episode.